Right, hi Emma, nice to see you. Hello, lovely to meet you. From Studio 77. Yes. So what would you like to talk to us about? So um, I just wanted to come and tell you about my new sewing membership. So it's brand new and I just launched it on the 1st of March. Okay, so the business is all about sewing, is it? Yeah, so uh, Studio 77 is a YouTube channel and a sewing community online. So I have Facebook groups. I have a public Facebook group called Sew, Create and Craft. Mm -hmm. And then I have a YouTube channel where I teach sewing tips and tricks and free patterns. Oh, that's brilliant. So it's online. So you can sit at home in front of your sewing machine and learn. Yes, absolutely. Yep, you can be anywhere in the world. And we do have members from all over the world, which is amazing. Wow. So let's go back to the beginning then. Where did you get the idea to start it? So I, my career, if you like, is as a creature costume maker. A creature costume maker. Yeah, mm. so I've been doing that over 20 years in film and TV. Okay. Um, so I've helped... Tell, tell us some that you've made. Yeah, so I've helped to... So this is always as part of a team, sometimes a small team, sometimes a big team. Um, but things that you may have heard of are uh, Harry Potter helped to make Chewbacca for Star Wars and Eagle Piggle for In the Night Garden. Isn't it oh. a great story? Oh my goodness <laughs> me, yeah, that's amazing. There is another podcast where we've talked about this. <laughs> that is great. And Oh, how long ago is that so people can uh, find probably it? Go, it goes back about 18 months or so, Jack, would you say? Yeah, yeah, he's nodding at me now. So yeah. basically scroll back and find yeah. it. Yeah, I can't um, remember what we... Yeah, we'll yeah, link, link it across it. Across, because everybody likes yeah, yeah. to hear the backstory, don't they? That's really great. So just on that note, as a, for a personal piece of information, do you sew people into it or is it easily get in the ball? Um, nine, nine and a half times out of ten, we have to do some kind of hidden fastening. It's nearly always hidden. Um, so it depends on the character and the, the design of the costume and things. Yeah, we work very closely with prosthetic makeup. So I don't do prosthetic makeup myself. But within the Creature FX team, there are always prosthetic makeup artists. Or I'd love always. her job, you know. <laughs> but you, you, so you used to do that. You don't do that anymore. So I... I do dip in and out of that. Um, I'm a mum, so I've got two kids, and the film industry is not very conducive... Family-friendly. ...to having children. So um, I made the decision to stop full-time after Star Wars. Um, I love doing it but just the hours and even people who don't have kids the hours are just ridiculous and overwhelming you're dedicated to it 100 percent. oh yeah you? everything you else is an aside yeah even if you've got a wedding or something people have had to miss weddings you know They're, even their own one <laughs> yeah, yeah hopefully not but yeah all kinds of things that you just have to you know they say jump you say how high lose your weekends lose your nights all nights done loads of all-nighters things like that it's just not it's not what um you know not so, for family So life. you kind of sub yourself out occasionally when it's convenient? Yeah, well, it tends to be that because people know my situation, they don't contact me as much, which oh, is right. good, good as well, mm. good and bad. So, um, yeah, I, I tend to get the more at-home jobs. So I do a couple of jobs a year in that world. Mm -hmm. And then, as I say, I'm now taking those skills, those 3D skills, they're quite unique. Um, so the... You, I, I mean, I could teach people how to make costumes, but how many people want to make Eagle Piggle at home? I'm not sure. Maybe some, but... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you and me could have a go, couldn't we? <laughs> in Night Garden. <laughs> Eagle Piggle in the Night Garden, isn't yes. it? <laughs> well, I've got various family members who might appreciate me turning up looking like that. Or Chewbacca. <laughs> or Chewbacca. Yeah. 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 Is that the hairy one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hairy or furry. I, I was I forgot to ask you, I don't know if I asked you this in the original interview, mm. when you watch a movie, do you, uh, does it shatter your illusion of watching that movie when you know what, how that costume is made? Oh, yeah. I'm I'm always, and I know all my colleagues are always looking at things like, oh, how did they get into that? And where's the opening of that? And how did they... <laughs> well, that's <laughs> the thing. That's interesting that, that I structure. even asked that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So well, that's sometimes it's great to know nothing about these things because you actually think it's a real monster or it's a real so-and-so. So, -and -so. so you, yeah. are you getting the love of films again now? Or did, did you when you were making the costumes? Oh, yeah. I mean, I still love film and, right. and TV. and still, I just look at it in a different way. I sort of look at it in a more visual, visual way, maybe. I don't mm. know. It's hard to say without knowing how other people view it. I know. That's very true, but, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so you moved away from that element, which yes. is extremely interesting. It must be... 
um, quite difficult to move away from as well because it's a completely different world, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, like I say, I, I do still have a few fingers in there. I'm doing a project this week, which is kind of film-related. Um, but, yeah, so I, I dip in and out still. But I, I wanted to teach those, although they're very unique, bespoke skills, they're also very applicable in the sewing world. Mm. But I have a di slightly different way of looking at things. So I think a little bit more outside the box rather than this is how you have to do it, which some sewing tutors do rightly or wrongly mm. um so i wanted to teach those 3d skills to other people that might not know them or are starting out want to um so i've moved into making bags and small projects definitely more in the bag making kind of genre um but i do do small projects toys um things like that so well, this is all to do with the website so this is all on studio 77 yep so i'm on youtube like i say and i do have a website studio 77.co.uk um, and as i say i've just launched my membership on march the first so as part of that i'm building an online community of people that are sewing the same projects together so the idea being that you can ask questions as you go along um, you get live tutorials along with two patterns every month that you get to keep for forever so you can watch back on those live tutorials whenever you like ask questions within within the group make friends um that kind of thing you get discounts and there's giveaways and lots of right, so you join as well. up as a member and you get all yeah. of that yeah mm -hmm. yeah so i have my free online community which also give tips and tricks like my youtube channel is obviously free and the so create and craft facebook group is free anyone can join that if they're interested and it doesn't have to be sewing actually in there any creative knitting crochet art anything you like you can post in there and then the membership is the the 77 club and you can find that on uh, my website studio 77 okay, so so how do you find all this time because it sounds really busy <laughs> Have you got time to lead a different oh, part I... of your life at all? Kids go to bed. <laughs> That's when she's Kids on camera. <laughs> How old are the children? Uh, five and ten. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So you get them One's to do the washing young. up, <laughs> no, I make wish. this food, do the hoovering, <laughs> so you can just do all the rest of it. Oh, a lot of people ask me where I find the time. I don't. I don't really sit down. <laughs> I just, I it's twenty-four hours. She's relaxing day. now, talking about this it. Is, so, yeah, this is my downtime. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah. So do you get the kids involved in this? No, they can't really be involved because I'm teaching adults, right? And they, some of the you know techniques are a bit more involved. But they do they do sew. My eldest loves to sew as well, so I'm trying to get them involved a little bit. And you know, my, I've got a, stu a work room, a studio, so they kind of come in and they delve through. Can I use this, mummy? And I'm like, no, that's my favourite fabric or whatever. So this is this is one of the things I find amazing. If you have <clears throat> if you're creative in that kind of material world. Mm. You must have a room f full of cupboards that are full of stuff. I do. And do you know where everything is? I do. You yeah. do? It's fairly organised. She's organised, unlike you. Like. Yeah. I am organised. <laughs> it's just not alphabetically. Mm. <laughs> oh, mine's not alphabetical. So, um, I how do... would you know how to find things? Uh, Asking well, for a friend. <laughs> she just knows, Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> You're just rubbish. I've got, um, I've, I've, there's actually a video, two videos on my YouTube channel if people are interested. One video went really well, and I was actually on um, Radio 2 talking about that because it was right in the height of lockdown, and I turned my garage myself into my workroom. So it's all insulated and everything with my dad. Huge, huge help from my dad. It wasn't just me. Um, but we did it ourselves on a really tight budget. So I was quoted 20,000 to do it by Builder. Okay. And I did it for 1,000. So <laughs> that's really interesting you say that. You see, so you did that on YouTube and people can watch yeah. you doing it. So you can watch exactly how I did it. I always say, I say in the video as well, and I always tell people I'm not an expert. My dad has a background in electronics. So he did actually all the electrical gubbins. But everything else you know he's just a bit of a handyman and can do do different things so he helped with that but yeah you can watch and you can see all the different steps we took and it, it's a brilliant workroom now it's insulated it's warm um and that's where i put everything and everything is in drawers in those calax units but there's another video on there showing how i kind of have organized things a little bit more as well how i turned it from the empty room so mm. i have one from the garage to the room and then one from the room to the craft room how i organized it so what's your favorite things to make bags i think at the moment i mean it kind of changes as i as i 
mm. and go through. But um, yeah, bags definitely. What kind of bags? Um, so this bag I made. Oh, that's nice. not my pattern, but um, that's yeah. So all d- like handbags, normal normal handbags of varying proportions and sizes and pockets and. And where do you sell them? Backpacks. I don't sell them. You keep them for yourself. I keep them for myself, and that's the best bit. <laughs> And that's what I want to help people to learn to do because you don't have to go out and buy a very expensive bag if you can make it yourself at home. Um, it it depends what kind of price you're going to spend on a bag, but generally it's well, it's cheaper than a designer bag. I'm going to say it's not cheaper than going into Next and buying one. Some people think that sewing is is cheap. It's not, sadly, but you get a huge amount more of excitement and. Um, you know, it's you the pride, have, isn't it, that you've actually pride. made something? Yeah, but you yeah. must have some kind of ability to start with. You're talking to somebody who sewed a PE skirt from the front to the back. You couldn't get into it. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't possibly know how to put a zip to get in, and I can turn up stuff. But you know, it's really you must have some basic knowledge to start with yeah so my membership isn't for beginners there are some people that haven't done a huge amount of sewing um but there is a a kind of slightly easier project and then there's your more wow project so there's a project that will take an hour an hour and a half at most and then there's your kind of four five hour project so um this month i had um an i spy bag which is basically a bean bag with pellets inside and a clear window and you move it around and you can find the little trinkets inside so there's like little paper clip or a little um, stone or different things it's a kid's fidget toy basically so that's your easier project for and you design that up to start with yeah so I've designed I've designed that and made that as a full written tutorial patterns with step-by-step color photos Mm -hmm. and then there's a live tutorial that goes with that so you can ask questions as you go along or you can watch it on replay as you like Um, but it's you know real-time slowing there's no sort of sped up sewing if that makes sense and then the kind of wow project or the more involved project is a unicorn bag a unicorn like messenger bag for kids so it looks like a unicorn it's got you know glittery hair and horn obviously and ears and stuff so it's not for the children to do it's for the, an it's, adult to do for it, a child exactly yeah it's definitely not for children My, the techniques i'm showing are definitely the more professional look you don't have to be professional obviously to do it but they're teaching you how to get that professional look um, on a regular domestic sewing machine. Don't need any fancy tools. Everything is very accessible. Thing is, yeah. these they, these things that you've been mentioning, I'm, I'm <clears throat> thinking back to uh, the tally, for instance, like the Great British Sewing Bee, for instance, oh, yes. which is a tally thing. So it's become more and more popular. Are you finding that? Yes. Oh, definitely. In lockdown, there was a massive, um, you know, resurgence of sewing, which is which is brilliant. Um, and I think people are becoming more aware where things are coming from when they're buying them. I've personally made a um, kind of pledge not to buy uh, as much as possible, like 95 percent not buy any of my own clothes. I have to make everything. Gosh, I um, wouldn't have anything to wear. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes you reassess everything as well. Mm. Like, do do I need to buy that ten pound t shirt? No, probably not. I've got like ten at home. Yeah, you know, it's that whole. It's just getting into that mindset, which I think is really important. Um, for not just for the environment, but like I've touched on as well, that there's a whole lot of, you know, unethical practices going on that I think it's important to think about. Yeah, these days as we move forward, yeah, um, reuse, yeah. Re- Cycle, yeah, yeah recycling isn't it yeah. which is a big thing still well do you know yeah. what i mean it's nothing on your level at all but i've got some um ve- two big curtains. quilt covers <laughs> curtains quilt covers whatever <laughs> um quilt covers and i've got a smaller bed so i'm gonna i thought i'd zip up the side and make it smaller yeah does that count yes it does <laughs> absolutely because but that's my, i'm like oh my god can i even do that but yeah, you, you see can. my mum uh, yeah you give my mum some material and uh, straight away that you, you can't leave anything lying around. I can't leave any of my clothes lying around because they'll end up in her her cupboard, made something else completely. Really? Yeah. So right. that that's back to the old days, the mm. old school where people yeah. used to do that a lot. Yeah. And we kind of lost it a bit in a generation. You know, she loves knitting as well, I so like she does all that kind of thing. Mm. You know, yeah. she'll turn up in the residential lounge and she'll and everyone will go, oh, love your top. Did you do that one, Chris? Like, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. And then she'll start explaining it all to her. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I think it's important to bring back those that that kind of mindset and those mm. kind of skills. We, it's such a throwaway culture mm. now and this generation, like you say. So I think it's it's great to to try and think that. We're not saying that, that you know. Obviously, I appreciate that not everyone can make their own clothes, um, but it's just thinking about that a bit more. And if you can, or if you're interested in learning, there are certainly ways that you can do that. Um, I don't teach clothes making um, just because I've decided not to, but there are plenty of places out there loads of free youtube videos and patterns you know there's some really simple patterns as well to get you started so youtube is brilliant for that for oh, anything isn't it so i good. need to do such and such youtube it and there's for somebody for twenty five thousand people telling you how to do it yeah mm, totally so how do we uh, see all your work um, so I'm on everywhere as Studio 7 T7. So there's a letter T in between the two sevens. Um, so YouTube, um, I don't, I'm not really on Twitter, although you can, I do have an account on there. But yeah, YouTube, Instagram and Facebook are the main places where you can find me. And if you you know want to get in touch on any of those platforms, I check them all reg regularly, so I will... Get and if people to want to join your membership, they just go through the same route as well. Yeah, so there's information on all of those, but also studio77.co.uk. You can just click the link that says join the club and you'll find that information. Brilliant. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. <laughs>